Hey y'all, this is Nina Stevens, and I'm in the South where sushi is still called bait. So, y'all know, I mentioned on my live stream, that um, I've been trying to get this sewing project done for quite some time. I try to get it done, something comes up. Work, or whatever. Yeah. So, I'm going to try one more time <laughs> to get this done and um, video it <clears throat> because I think that it turned out pretty cool. So what I'm going to do today is um, a couple years back I purchased a collar for Callie and um, I paid 20 bucks for the collar which didn't bother me because it was for a good cause um, <clears throat> so I didn't um, have a problem with paying that much the problem that I had was the collar wasn't made very well so I was looking around trying to figure out um, if I could make one myself and I figured out I watched some videos and um, I don't even remember who it was now. I watched so many of them. But I was playing around with it with some extra fabric that I had. And I think it turned out pretty cool. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how I made these collars. Now, <clears throat> these are the three that I have for um, a large to extra large dog. These turned out so freaking cute. Um, I'm going to um, insert some photos here of one like this that Callie is wearing. Um, <clears throat> it's the blue camo. I think it's pretty. I just, I just love it. I just love it. And then I have the one made out of the flag. And these are adjustable collars. And then I have one that is red. So, one issue that I had with the collar that I purchased was at, um, at the high stress areas, um, like where, let's see, right here where this connection is, um, it, it wasn't put together very well and it came apart and then another problem that I had was the one that I purchased was made with interfacing instead of webbing and after a while it started to collapse um, because the interfacing although it starts out pretty steady it doesn't stay that way with regular use so right here where the d-ring is the collar part would collapse and cause the d-ring to twist and turn and and not look very good so these are adjustable um, let's see I'm gonna bring bring it all the way in Adjust it as small as it will go. Yes, that is 16. So 16 inches around the neck is about like this. And then it will go all the way out to, let's see. They can get pretty large. <laughs> pretty, pretty large. Where's my tape? I want to say it's 38, but I can't remember. Let's see. Let me find my measuring tape. Okay. 
I got it. Let's see. Nope, 28. So, it will adjust down to 16 inches um, around the neck and up to 28 inches around the neck. So, that's a pretty large, pretty large neck. <laughs> Pretty, pretty. So, these are the collars that I have. And I was looking through my fabric stash that I have. <laughs> and I found this color. This is orange. Now, my daughter said, oh... Orange is my favorite color. I'm like, awesome. So that's what I'm going to be making today's collar out of for this demonstration. And I don't like the way that the orange thread looks against the orange fabric. So I'm going to use a red thread um, in this fabric. I think it would be prettier done that way. Just my opinion. So I have, and these strips, and this strip is cut three and a half inches wide. Um, and that way I can have enough room to finish the edges and wrap the webbing around, wrap the fabric around the webbing. This is the webbing that I use. It's an inch wide and I've got it cut 31 inches long and this is for, like I said, a large to an extra large doll. So <clears throat> I'm going to cut the extra fabric off of the strip and then I will bring you closer so you can see how I make this collar. And I like the way they turned out. They, they turned out extra sturdy. Um, what about probably five inches maybe? I think that'll be good. So, on one end I've got that much extra fabric. And then on this end, I've got this much extra fabric. Now this fabric is to attach the hardware, like um, the D-ring and the clips and all of that, and be able to fold it down and then attach it to the webbing that's on the inside of the fabric. Um, and not have the webbing go through the triglide and the clips because it's very difficult to get it through there, especially with a second layer. So I'm going to put this over here on my ironing board. I'm going to iron on. Absolutely. And then, so the webbing is nylon. So before you start your sewing um, and making if you decide to make a collar you take a lighter and you light the end of it and just kind of melt just the end now folks you're not building a fire all you want to do is melt the end of it to keep it from raveling because this is nylon so just burn it right there which I've already done on this piece and right there and then I'm going to bring you closer so you can see how I make this collar. I think they turned out pretty, pretty cute. Um, so I have, I have the fabric over here on my ironing board. I'm going to press it out and I will bring you closer and let you follow along. I think it was fun. It's fun to do. And when I have time, I like sewing. <clears throat> Um, I like sewing, I like painting, um, 
lots of things I like doing. I just need time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> um, anyway, so I hope you enjoy following along with me. Um, I know I mentioned on my channel about showing some of the things that I do with sewing and several of you said that you would be interested in seeing those things so hopefully this is um, one of them and it will interest you and you will enjoy it so hang on and I'll bring you closer so I've got my fabric on the ironing board and I'm just gonna press out the wrinkles don't need no wrinkles up in the fabric right here on the edge I've got a quarter of an inch turned under and I've pressed that because that's going to be the first thing I do is finish this outside edge all right so I've got my fabric and my machine on I am going to lengthen my stitch to 3.5 because this webbing is pretty thick and I also have a blue jean needle on my machine um, it, it will make it a lot better trust me all right so on this one I'm gonna leave it at three and I'm going to just sew straight sew the edge of this fabric to finish it I'm just gonna place it under my foot Start with just a, a quarter inch seam, nothing fancy. So that's what the stitch looks like on the edge of the fabric. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to the other end. And on this side is finished, so on this side I'm going to attach this webbing right to the raw edge of the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave about this much fabric at the end to put my triglide on there. Um, and the rest of it I'm going to sew straight down the, the raw edge of this fabric attaching the webbing to the fabric. Easy peasy, quarter inch, nothing fancy. Easy peasy. Alright. Now the next thing I want to do, alright, so that's what it looks like on the raw edge. So the next thing I'm going to do is this raw edge here, I'm going to turn under. And all I'm going to do is just finger press it with my nail. I'm not even going to iron it. I'm just going to press it with my nail. Put it under the machine. Finish that raw edge. So when I turn it under, I don't have to worry about trying to tuck those ends in. All right. So there's that end all finished all done so we're going to go back to the ironing board because i need to press this again see how it kind of puckers a little bit i don't know if you can see that or not but i need to get that as straight as possible so that when i turn it um it will all be even steven all right so i have it on the ironing board and all i'm going to do is turn this under like so all the way down to the end just like that press it into place all right so on the other side i'm going to turn over turn under this side as well I'm going to do is lay the iron on it and press it. What I've done, so I've pressed under the seam. 
on the edge and I've added the walking foot to my machine because this is fairly thick so I don't want it to get tangled up in the machine and believe me it will <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this under here and I'm going to sew down the entire length on this side of this collar. Alright, so I'm almost to the end. So all I'm going to do is hold it and let the walking foot continue taking the fabric all the way out to the end. And I'll show you what it looks like. That's what your seam looks like on the inside and that's what it looks like on the outside. Now this seam right here will be to the inside of the collar so you won't see that. This is the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to make another seam down the other side, down this side to match. I like the look with the two seams and you've got all this hidden. So to me, if you don't have that second stitch, it's not going to look right on the collar. And you see those two stitches? I think that's really pretty to me. That's what it looks like. So if you remember, on this side right here, I didn't close those seams. So I'm going to run a stitch right across the bottom to close both of these ends and then we'll attach the hardware. Alright, so I've got all that done. Now I'm going to take this walking foot off. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'm going to pull you down here and then I'm going to show you how we put the collar, how we put the hardware on there. One of these ends, and you can feel right there where the webbing is, this longer end is for the D-ring and the end attachment. So we're going to start at the short end. And there's the seam on the inside, so that needs to be facing you. We're going to put the um, tri-glide on there first. So here are the parts that I have for my collar. This is called the tri-glide. This is one end and this is the other end. And both of these are curved. So the way, the direction that that curves is very important. And the D-ring. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the tri-glide on here. Alright, so you've got the raw edge, the inside seam facing up. You're going to come up through the bottom of the tri-glide. And pull it down to where the webbing starts and you can feel it where it starts right there I'm going to go up through the other side all right so I've got this folded down so I've got the triglide folded down so I'm going to stitch right along the edge of this triglide and then I'm going to make a box stitch in here and then I'm going to sew it on this end. This is one of the high stress areas and this is one of the problems that I had with the collar that I bought for Cali is this part came apart um, eventually so I'm going to make sure that I reinforce that with extra stitching and I'll show you what I mean. so that is really strong that is that is really strong in there um, the way it's stitched with the box stitch so what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the rest of um, the hardware and I'll show you how to do that <clears throat> the best way I can tell you on how to figure out how to put this together is you want to fold it to where your wrong sides there's the inside seam right there there's the inside seam fold your collar wrong sides together okay 
There's your triglide. The other end of it, you're going to take this, this curve, and hold it down like that. So you're going to put this through the end and it's curving down. I'm going to put it through the end and you're going to feed it all the way to this turn right here. Alright? So when you get it to the turn and you turn it up, it's going to be curving toward your triglide. So the other, the other end of this, you're going to, you have wrong sides together still. There's your seam. There's your seam. You're going to feed it up through the bottom of your triglide. Don't get it twisted. Just like that. Alright. So you've got the finished side looking at you here. And the finished side looking at you there. So you're going to feed this through this side of the triglide. And do you see that the triglide is also curved? All right, so there's your triglide on there, there's this end, so now we're going to put the D-ring on there and just let it go all the way to the triglide, that'll be fine. So this end is next. So it is also curved, so we're working on the collar. So this needs to go curving toward this connection, alright? So we're going to go through the bottom, and I'm going to pull it all the way to where the webbing starts. Then we're going to go up through the top, all the while keeping it curving towards you to close the inside of the leash and have the outside showing, the finished side. Alright. There you go. So when you put it together like this, all your finished edges are to the outside and all of your seams or to the inside like that. So now you've got this connection on here and I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the end. I'm going to sew right here next to it back and forth and then we're going to put um, the D-ring on there. So I'm going to sew across here and reinforce this stitch because this is another stress area that I found that was a problem with the collar that I bought, Cali, that was made with interfacing instead of webbing. So I'm going to put this in the machine and I'll show you what I'm going to do. There's the, the box scene. So now I'm going to pull the D-ring up and I'm going to place it against that seam. Get it as tight as you can, just like that. And fold this down. Then I'm going to put this in my, in my machine. And I'm going to sew right along the edge of this D-ring. So there is the seam, there's the D-ring, there's the end, there's the inside of it, and that is super reinforced through there. When you bring it together and you clip it, you 
you have all of your finished edges outside all of your seams are inside there's a thread <laughs> all of your seams are to the inside so you don't see those and it's a fully adjustable collar for a large and extra large dog I think it turned out super cute I love the way these turn out and it's so sturdy and put together well that I don't think that I'm going to have the same problem that I did with the one that was made with interfacing. So I think these turned out super cute. <laughs> so if you are interested in purchasing a collar that is for a large and an extra large dog, message me in the comments. Um, they are $12 plus six dollars shipping and handling if you're interested in purchasing one let me know um, you can message me um, comment in this video or you can email me at southern arc homestead at gmail.com and I will get one of these out these are the four that I have made the orange the flag the blue camo and the red so if you're interested let me know. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you decide to give it a try because it's really fun and easy to do um, and I think doing it this way will make a very sturdy collar for your furry friend. Um, my girl <laughs> needs a sturdy collar. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I appreciate your support and that's it for me so until next time I'll see you later.